This video is rated T or tickle me pink. Do you guys want to know what the absolute most meta weapons are for the current escape from Tarkov White? My name is Tickle Me Pink. I'm level 62. I've tested these builds for several weeks now, and I'm ready to present you guys the best weapons money can possibly buy in the current escape from Tarkov White. This isn't like previous wipes where the mutant is just like the top G. We have a lot of weapons to pick from that all have strong suits for different situations, and you want to bring the right weapon to the right situation. We'll talk about why each of them made it into the meta tier list. Most of them are the top contenders for their caliber. And we'll also have a couple 308 weapons to choose from because 308 is top G in Escape from Tarkov right now. It is the best round you can possibly run all around. And you're going to want different 308 weapons depending on your case use. Without further ado, let's cut this intro bullshit and hop straight into these builds. I just want to quickly thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. Before we go any farther, I actually signed a contract with them where I have boxes to give out to you guys. If you've never had HelloFresh and you live in the US, I can get you guys free food this week. Just go ahead and shoot me a message on Discord. Tell me you're interested in the HelloFresh deal. I also get paid when I give you guys free groceries. So go ahead and get in contact with me. You're doing me a favor. I'm doing you a favor. Let's continue with the video. The first build you're going to want to know about is the SA58. It was in my best level three traders video. And this is just going to be your heavy hitting assault rifle. Think of this as the mutant in the past. Think of this is the juice cannon from several wipes ago this is your heavy hitting assault rifle it has hardly any kick the ammo is readily available and this is kind of your jack of all trades heavy hitting assault rifle now if you've been playing escape from tarkov for a while you probably remember the juice cannon landmark dubbed it that the s58 back in the day it was a low recoil 308 slinging machine to go ahead and utilize the juice cannon though you had to put on the longest barrel the best suppressor the best grip and then the recoil was pretty manageable with the latest update, the recoil has been brought to next to nothing, considering it's shooting 308. So we're able to capitalize on this and run this with a short barrel, greatly increasing our ergo, our responsiveness, our weight, while still maintaining that old recoil pattern that made the SAF-D8 so strong. So with this build, we're going to be prioritizing high ergo in close quarter combat situations. This is a great weapon to run on something like streets, on customs, etc. You can pop shots at distance with this, but we'll have better 308s for that later down the line. So now that you know what we're looking for, let's build this SA-58. So we're going to start with a short barrel base from Mechanic Level 4 for this SA-58. It comes with the 11-inch already on it, and it's going to save us money in the long run. You can get SA-58s on the flea market, but generally they tend to cost you more, and they're not coming at 100 out of 100 durability, so you can avoid the chance of jamming. The first decision I want you guys to make is if you want to try and run this loud, or if you want to run this with a suppressor. Most people like to run around with a suppressor, however, if you haven't tried the SA58 Stubby with a blast mitigation device, I would strongly suggest it. It's going to make it extremely snappy, extremely responsive. If you find yourself to be a movement-esque player, you're running between cover a lot, you're really going to like the ergo nature of this weapon, how fast you're going to be able to shoulder it, and how quickly you're going to be able to turn on your enemies. If you would rather play a little bit slower, a little bit more methodical, then you might opt to go ahead and suppress this. And with that, you're going to want to go ahead and use the CAC QDC Suppressor as well as the CAC QDC muzzle brake. Make sure you're using the CAC QDC on screen. Right now there's two variations of this, and this one has significantly better stats. You can get these from Mechanic Level 3 for 18,000 rubles for the muzzle, and Peacekeeper Level 3 for $438 after doing Gunsmith Part 13. If you choose to run this with a blast mitigation device, make sure you go ahead and put a LaRue LT101 riser mount from Mechanic Level 2. This is just gonna go ahead and raise your optic away from that muzzle, so you're not getting flashed nearly as much and you're able to put better shots on target. That's one of the biggest complaints about the blast mitigation devices, and many people do not know about that trick. After you put your own personal flare on this SA58, and you know if you wanna run it loud or suppressed, let's go ahead and mod this. Now, whatever your decision is, this weapon is gonna have a plethora of ergo and be very light due to the short barrel nature of it. So we're gonna go ahead and lean into that and add more recoil control to this SA58. For that, we're gonna add the Advanced Receiver Buffer Tube from Mechanic Level 4 for 11,000 rubles after killing Gunsmith Part 21. On top of that, we'll have the PRS Gen 3 Star from Peacekeeper 3 for $184. You'll need to complete Gunsmith 14 for this. And this is just a great combination that gives you a lot of recoil control. Next, we'll have the AG Foul Pistol Grip from Skier Level 4 for 9,000 rubles. This just gives us the most ergonomics in the pistol grip slot. For the handguard, we want the VTOR CASV FAS handguard from Mechanic Level 4 for 22,000 rubles. And we'll go ahead and get the 2 inch and 5 inch VTOR rails from Mechanic Level 4 to go ahead and mount our foregrip as well as our tactical device. For foregrip, we'll go with the SE Express foregrip from Mechanic Level 4. This is going to be a very common foregrip for a lot of our builds. 
it has the current best blend of recoil and ergonomics so unless a weapon really is skewed to needing more ergonomics or needing more recoil this is just your go-to hybrid foregrip you can get that for 17,000 rubles for a light i like to run the balder pro from skew level 2 for 9,000 rubles the lights do have a little bit of difference on what kind of blinding you'll do or what kind of vision you'll get from the light and if you want a separate video on that let me know in the comments down below for an optic, I choose to run the EOTech XPS 3-0 from SKU Level 4 for $249. The Boss Optic can be another great choice. I personally don't run the hybrid sight on this because I don't go for many like tap fire shots. I'm not really using this in a mid-range engagement. The MDR will fill that niche much, much better than the SA58 in my opinion. We'll cover that later on in this video. And to round it out, I like to use the FAL L1A1 30 round magazines. So the FAL does have the option for 50 round magazines, the high capacity magazines. However, 308, it's a big round, it's a heavy round. Those 50 rounders are really gonna weigh down the weapon and kind of take away all the benefits we get from running the short barrel. If you have to have high capacity magazines, by all means, run the 50 rounders. Just keep in mind with 30 rounders, you're shooting 308. You get two shots, center mass with this, you are going to drop people. The 30 rounders can wipe five man crews if you have some trigger discipline. So try it out with those 30 rounders. Inside the magazines, I like to go ahead and pack M62 on top and I use a loop of M62 in M80s and at the bottom M80s. If you guys haven't seen how to pack magazines like a pro, I'll have that video in the top right. You can do absolutely crazy things with that tech. And for this build, I like to usually run four magazines, one in the gun. You're gonna be chewing through ammunition relatively fast and because it's a close quarter assault rifle of choice, you don't wanna be having to pack magazines in front of your enemies' faces. And then now you have a completely meta SA-58. If you want this full build, navigate over to my Twitch. It'll be linked in the description down below and just type in exclamation point meta SA58 exactly as you see on screen right now and you'll get the full build sheet for this. Additionally, you can find this in my Discord in the Weapon Builds channel. The SA58 is going to total out to 310,000 rubles. Not terrible, but still on the pricier side. Let's move on to the next meta weapon. The next meta weapon we're talking about is the AK-12. You saw this in my best level 3 weapons series. You saw this in my best budget series. The AK-12 is just your go-to 545 of choice to swipe. It has the best hidden stats, it's very affordable, it has a high rate of fire, and all the problems it has in the real world do not exist in game. A lot of the 650 rounds per minute Kalashnikovs that are found in the game, even fully modded, can cost an arm and a leg, and they really don't feel any different than the stock 545s before you even modded them. And that's why the AK-12 is so strong this wipe. There's a hidden benefit to the AK-12 as well, and I'm sure throughout your leveling experience on your way to getting the max traders, you found a plethora of GP25 underbarrel grenade launchers that need to be put on Kalashnikov weapons. And the AK-12 can fit that niche. Normally you need to run certain handguards that actually fit grenade launchers, but the AK-12 being a new rifle doesn't have any handguards or muzzle devices in the game. And something you guys might not know about underbarrel grenade launchers is they offer the best recoil control skill in the game. Yes, they are actually the best foregrips in the entire game. So you're going to be reducing your recoil with the AK-12 while utilizing this underbell grenade launcher. The only downside of these underbell grenade launchers is they are heavy. So you need to make a decision. If you're going to be running an underbell grenade launcher, you're not going to run this suppressed. It's going to be way too heavy. You're not going to be able to shoulder it fast or for very long at all. It's so heavy and so slow that not only when you shoulder it, does it take a long time, but it goes past your eye and then readjusts to your eye. We're talking like an entire second to ADS this. So if you're gonna run this with a grenade launcher, run it loud. Additionally, there's been changes to grenade launchers to swipe, where if you complete the quest, a best job in the world, where you only need to kill 30 enemies with Kalashnikov weapons from over 100 meters, you'll actually be able to purchase these underbarrel grenades. And there's one last hidden benefit of the GP25 underbarrel grenade launcher, is it only shoots one type of grenade, and that is the VOG 25. This is an impact grenade in theory. It only takes about five meters to arm, so you can shoot this anywhere and it'll go off. With the M4, there is a plethora of grenades and there are some that arm very fast, but almost every single one arms at around 45 meters and it also falls off at 90 meters. It's a super niche use and to actually get similar style VOG 25 grenades, the M4 you need to kill Big Pipe and hope that he has the correct grenades. For all these reasons, the AK-12 hits a lot of interesting niches you're also gonna be finding loads of high tier ammunition for 545 all around the map. And we need a weapon to shoot it through. Whether it's your BS rounds, your BP rounds, your 7 and 40, you need a weapon for those rounds. And the AK-12 will solve that for you. Now, being as the AK-12 is a relatively new rifle in real life, as well as to escape from Tarkov, there's not many attachments for it. 
If you're not running an underbuilt grenade launcher, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and put a AK-12 sound suppressor on this from Prapper Level 4 for 49,000 rubles. And this weapon does struggle a little bit with its weight as well as its ergonomics. So we're gonna go ahead and make up for that by adding the new Daniel Defense Enhanced Collapsible Buttstock from Peacekeeper 3 for $74, as well as the Daniel Defense TCS 20 millimeter butt pad from Peacekeeper 4 for $63. If you guys aren't too familiar with this new stock, Think of it like an MOE that can go ahead and enhance Ergo. It also has two different options for butt pads, similar to like the 155 shotgun with its butt pad options. And the butt pad we choose here has a good blend of recoil and a little bit of Ergo instead of full ergonomic build. For a pistol grip, we go with the AGS-74 Pro Pistol Grip from Skier Level 4 for 16,000 rubles. You're gonna need a complete gunsmith part 19 for this. And this will just give us the most ergonomics in this slot. Now, I like to go ahead and pair this open with a Wilcox Boss XE Reflex Sight from Peacekeeper 4 for $484. This is a very expensive sight to go ahead and put on this. The reason I like to do so is if you're using my keybinds, this optic is the only optic in the game besides the Holosun that actually has a laser built into it. So if you're using my keybinds and you recently watched my settings video, I'll have links in the top right now, by the way, if you want to get a much better image in game much better performance and be able to spot your enemies faster and have super advanced keybinds go check that out i put a lot of time effort and money in that video and it will make a night and day difference in your escape from tarkov performance however you just go ahead and flick a mouse wheel down with my keybinds you'll turn on the laser and you can utilize this to aim your grenade launcher without having to flick around with your tactical vice and leaving it in a flashlight format so you can blind your enemies when you need there is a hidden trick with the grenade launcher as well if you actually go ahead and use the post from the grenade launcher as well as the end post of the ak itself you can line up your grenades perfectly so the way you do this is you treat the post coming out of the grenade launcher to the left of it you treat that as your x-axis so line that up with wherever you want your target on the x-axis to be then use the sight post at the end of your gun is the y-axis and level this up with where you want the shot to land how high or how low you want the shot to land from your vog 25 and then let her rip it's a much more accurate way of doing it than the laser but the laser can be nice on the on the fly situation where you need to get a grenade up into a window so that's why for this weapon i would strongly recommend you use the boss reflex sight and spend the extra money to run it if you're not running the grenade launcher you're gonna need a foregrip and for this foregrip once again we're gonna go with the se express foregrip from mechanical of four for 17,000 rubles like we've said previously, it is your standard best foregrip for this wipe. After that, you will have a completely meta-modified AK-12. Do not sleep on this weapon. It is a ton of fun to use. I would relate it somewhat to like an HK from the HK heydays. It feels really good. It has a lot of soul behind it, which sounds silly, but it does have like a very unique characteristic behind it. And the added benefit of getting to run a grenade launcher on a meta weapon is so much fun. Do not sleep on this rifle. And that is going to bring the total of this AK-12 to 242,000 rubles. Not too bad, all things considered, for an ultra meta build. If you guys want this full meta AK-12, you can type exclamation point meta AK-12 in my Twitch chat and they'll pop up the full build. If this video has helped you in any way, shape, or form, please consider smashing the dislike button and telling me to wrap my car around a pole in the comments down below. The 308 weapon of choice for long range is going to be the RSAS. At the moment in Escape from Tarkov, there are high-end 308 bolt-action rifles, and with the buffs to pistols and being able to emergency draw them, pistols are in a much better spot. You've probably used the 5.7 already. However, that being said, there's not much reason to use a bolt-action rifle where you can get similar MOA and accuracy stats, while also being able to put more shots downrange. This will save your life in situations where you have multiple enemies, or in situations where you simply aren't afforded the time or the luxury to line up a perfect shot. Now there's a few different DMRs that kind of fit this category, namely the SR25 as well as the G28. The G28 is actually by all accounts a slightly better than the SR25. The only thing is it's locked behind Shooter Born in Heaven. And I know most of you guys get to max traders and you are done questing. Most people do not want to go do Shooter Born in Heaven, but you will have the RSS unlocked and it is just a barely, barely better. I'm talking like the smallest percentage you would probably not even recognize the difference. For the SR25, the MOA on it is really bad. They nerfed the SR25 kind of heavily. It actually has worse accuracy than the RPDN, like the heavy machine gun that they added this wipe. So keep that in mind. You can throw a lot of money at it and polish it up, but at the end of the day, it's just a polished turd. And it fits more in like the mid to budget DMR range. It's not really the meta DMR. There is also the M1A in this category, but it is just in an awful stare right now. I'm not going to say much else about it. So why the RSS? Well, the RSS actually has the highest accuracy out of all of these rifles. It also got a bit of a stealth buff, getting the 25 round treatment from the new SIG Spear. You can actually load 308s in this. Now, you're going to have two options for the RSS if you want to run it loud 
or if you want to run it suppressed. I would strongly suggest you run it suppressed. It can just be kind of a fun off meta weapon if you run it loud. I like to shoot M62s out of it, put a blast mitigation device that has this big fire explosion when you shoot it. It shoots bullets that are yellow and I like to call it the thunder gun. It is very viable. The shots will reset and you'll have a slightly faster tempo, but you need to put very accurate shots on target as everyone is going to see your muzzle flash and your tracers and know your position immediately. For that reason, I would recommend you run it suppressed, but it's just a fun alternative. With the changes to recoil control stat, the hidden stats like convergence and dispersion have changed quite a lot, but all you need to know if you don't know anything about convergence or dispersion is the RSAS resets very fast. We're going to actually go ahead and lean into ergonomics since it doesn't need much more recoil control stats, which would actually modify the convergence and dispersion stats. And if you want me to do a full video on hidden stats and things you probably don't know about modifying your weapons, let me know in the comments down below. But anyways, to really suit this build and make it shine, we're going to go for a full ergo build so we can ADS fast and hold that ADS. That means we're also going to try and lighten up this build just a little bit, and that way our ADS is actually quieter as well. So if you want to ADS near someone, they're much less likely to hear it, as opposed to you using like a heavy machine gun. Now we're going to be starting with the default RSS you can actually get from Peacekeeper. He sells it at level 4, and he sells it for just $1,167, which is surprisingly cheap, all things considered. Additionally, if you're done using your dog tags, your level 15 and above dog tags for things like items, case barters, or scav junk box barters, which I strongly suggest you do first and foremost, you can turn in 8 Usek and Bear dog tags that are over level 15 for a free RSS. It's not insane value, but you know, you're getting free guns to murder people, which is kind of fun. With either option, I'd strongly suggest you go ahead and downsize to the AR-10 18-inch barrel from Peacekeeper level 4 for $334. This actually ends up not costing much at all because we're going to sell the full-size barrel back. And like I was saying earlier, this is just to actually go ahead and lighten the weapon, increase the ergonomics of it, and our MOA and our accuracy is not going to be affected much at all. It's still an absolute laser beam. One of the most accurate weapons in the entire game, actually. After that, we're going to go ahead and put on the Meta 308 Muzzle Brake Kit and the Sound Suppressor, and that's the CAC QDC. Make sure you have this Muzzle Brake on screen right now, which is available for Mechanic Level 3 for 18,000 rubles. There's one that has the exact same name that has way worse stats, so just keep that in mind. Then we'll go ahead and put on the CAC PRS Sound Suppressor. This is from Peacekeeper Level 3. I think it's for $438 after Gunsmith Part 13. For a stock, the go-to meta stock, the Advanced Receiver Buffer Tube from Mechanic Level 4 for 11,000 rubles after completing Gunsmith Part 21. On top of that, we'll go with the Daniel Defense Enhanced Collapsible Butt Stock from Peacekeeper 3 for $74 and the Daniel Defense TCS 20mm Butt Pad from Peacekeeper Level 4 for $63. You can go ahead and get the thinner butt pad if you want more ergonomics, if you feel like it doesn't need any more recoil control, but I've opted for the thicker butt pad on this, as you get more bang for your buck with that butt pad. For a pistol grip, the Growl-S pistol grip from Peacekeeper Level 4 for $177 gives us the most ergonomics in the pistol grip slot. After that, I like to get an SE Express foregrip in FDE from Mechanical Level 4 for 16,000 rubles. I pair this with a Balder from Skier 2 for 9,000 rubles. And we make sure to go ahead and throw on the M bus flip ups on the front and back from mechanic level two that are 4,000 rubles each. Just go ahead and get an extra ergonomics from those flip ups. I like to pair this with the Geisley 30 millimeter scope mount from SKU level four for 15,000. You're going to need the top section of this as well, which is also sold from SKU level four for another 2,000 rubles. Go ahead and slot your 30 millimeter optic of choice into the RSAS. I usually opt to go for a razor in this slot, but you can put whatever you want in here. You may also have really good luck with the Burris, as it's a 1x4 instead of a 1x6. If you find yourself in a situation where you have actually too much magnification and it's hard to track people because you're more of like a mid-range gamer. Lastly, we're going to go ahead and use the Sig Spear 25 round spear mags from Peacekeeper Level 4 for $45. And I like to go ahead and load this with M61 or M80. I know M62 is purchasable, it's better than M80, but you're kind of defeating the point of running the suppress if your enemies see your tracers and can pinpoint your location. I would strongly recommend running the RSAS on a map like Woods, a map like Lighthouse, or maybe if you're running the outside of Shoreline, for example, hunting the goons. This is going to be your long range weapon of choice to swipe. This RSAS prices out at 391,000 rubles. If you want this full meta RSAS, you can go ahead and type exclamation point meta RSAS in my Twitch chat and that'll pop up for you guys. For the next weapon on this list, we had to have a 556 weapon. So it was between the M4, the AUG, and the AHK. And the AUG automatically got knocked off because although it is extremely good, for the price you're paying for it, it is much more of a budget option. If you want the absolute best bang for your buck, it's really just between the M4 and the HK. And although the HK has come back super strong this wipe, you're only gaining around 50 rounds per minute. The barrel length is quite a bit longer. It weighs quite a bit more. You can't shoulder it as fast. You're much less mobile. And I think the snappy nature of the M4 makes it a much better headshotter in close quarters. 
and the short barrel really comes in clutch with not indexing. You can choose to go to the HK and I'll have a really fun off meta HK build for you guys to run on the next video. But for this video, I have to give it to the M4 and it is an expensive build just so you guys know. So this wipe, you may have noticed they actually removed the lower receiver trades for M4s from mechanics. You can no longer just change out the lower receiver in M4 to completely freshen the durability. So we're going to have to start with a base M4 from somewhere. And I strongly recommend you guys use the barter option for mechanic level two. He wants two pro kills at the time of recording this comes out to around 120 to 130k conveniently you can actually go ahead and sell this right back to him for 132,000 rubles and the only thing we want from this is the m4 lower receiver you might ask why are we not just buying the lower receiver from mechanic and that is because they actually removed the lower receiver purchases from the traders so we have to get that m4 somewhere if this price goes up you can also just get one off mechanic for 70,000 rubles but that lower receiver is going to end up actually costing you around 35,000 rubles if you go that route. The M4 is always challenging to build because AR-15s are such beloved platforms here in America. Battlestate Games knows this and they've added a plethora of attachments in game because some people like to build their ARs like they have their ARs format in real life. And maybe if that's you, post some of your AR pictures in the gun channel on Discord. I'd be, I would love to see that. With a plethora of attachments, there's different stat distributions. There are a lot of different meta variations of items in the game. And most of them cost around the same amount, but give a different blend of stats. So it can be very difficult to isolate and find the perfect M4 build when it comes to the right barrel length, the right debuffs. As you may know, sound suppressors and magazines give different debuffs in the game, like chance to jam, etc., or chance to overheat, and getting the right blend of ergo and recoil, just like with all the previous builds before this. I messed around this build far longer than I really want to admit, but I'm happy to tell you guys I have it dialed in. The first major decision we have to decide is what upper receiver we're going to use and it really only comes down to two options you have the ax15 or the mer 1s now you're going to get more stats overall with the ax15 and i would strongly recommend you have that and if you want just a little bit more recoil but less stats overall you can also go for the mer 1s which will go ahead and help that recoil control stat if you choose to utilize the AX-15 upper receiver, you'll be paying 34,000 rubles from skier level four. The next most important component we really need to talk about with the M4 is choosing the correct barrel length. This is gonna decide what handguards we can go ahead and use, what gas box we can go ahead and use, and also determine the indexing of the rifle. We wanna find that sweet spot with all of those things in mind. And with all those factors in mind, there really is only one option, and that is the Hansen 16 inch barrel has the best of all three of these worlds and you can go ahead and get this from skew level four for 36,000 rubles with the hansen 16 it gives us the option to use the ballistic advantage low pro gas block from skew level three for 7,000 rubles this is just the best gas block there's really no other option you should go for it's cheap and it gives a lot of stats for the handguard you will have an option now that the go-to meta handguard is the psi 14 and a half inch handguard from skier four for a whopping 80,000 rubles now if you want to have a very very meta m4 but you don't want to pay 80,000 rubles for a handguard and you want just like the next best handguard i don't blame you and for that you're going to go ahead and get the long urx handguard it's a two-piece handguard so you're going to need the top and the bottom and i'd recommend you go ahead and then get the little ergo attachments on the side they're kind of like skateboard grip if you will and they just bump the ergonomics even more but if we're talking completely meta, the Psy 14 half inch handguard is going to be your go-to. Attached onto that Psy, we're going to go ahead and put the SE Express foregrip from Mechanic 4 for 17,000 rubles. Once again, just the most well-rounded foregrip. And then we'll also go ahead and attach the Balder Pro from Skier 2 for 9,000 rubles. At the end of your barrel, you're going to need a muzzle brake and a suppressor. And you have two options just like you did with the handguard. Now, the absolute most meta muzzle brake and suppressor you can have is the Griffin Armament Gate Lock Flash Hider from Skier 3 for 9,000 rubles, followed by the Griffin Armament M4SD Sound Suppressor from Skier 4 for 88,000 rubles. You guys might remember the M4SD from something like Arma 2. This gives us the best stats in the game for a muzzle brake and suppressor combo. However, if you want the next best thing and save yourself a lot of money, you can go ahead and go for the Soccer ASR Muzzle Brake and the Soccer ASR Suppressor. They're roughly half the price at the time of recording this video. This video might shoot them up in value because that's the flea market price. So just keep that in mind. On top of your rail, you're going to want to go ahead and put on the MBUS flip up irons for just extra ergo. You can get these from Mechanic Level 2 for 4,000 rubles each. I personally like to run the EOTech XPS 3-0 from Skier 4 for $249. For a charging handle, we're going to go ahead and utilize the Raptor charging handle from Mechanic 4 for 8,000 rubles. Just for a little ergonomics boost. The back end of the weapon, I go with the advanced receiver buffer tube from Mechanic 4 for 11,000 rubles after you complete Gunsmith Part 21. 
just the most well-rounded buffer tube once again and we put the best recoil stock on top of it the prs gen 3 stock from peacekeeper 3 for 184 dollars after completing gunsmith 14. another little hidden tip if you want to make this even cheaper you can go ahead and use the socom stock it actually replaces the buffer tube and you can put the butt pad on top of it as well and if you go ahead and make the budget option for this build you're probably going to save yourself somewhere around 150,000 rubles which is just insane that's why i've given you guys a budget option it's very close in stats just not quite there for the pistol grip we're going to go with the growl s pistol grip from peacekeeper 4 for 177 dollars and then for magazine choice, I like to go ahead and utilize the Magpul P Mag Gen M3 40 round mags from Peacekeeper 3. They're $50 each. 60 round mags just weigh down the weapon too much. The ADS much slower, and they're going to cause your weapon to sway significantly slower. 40 round magazines really are that sweet spot, and the only downside to them is the 3x1 slots, just like with the AK-12. If you saw my magazine packing video, I would strongly suggest you guys watch that. But I would go ahead and do something like a couple 55A1 on top, followed by some 995 or SSAP for your plate defeaters, and then run a loop of 55A1 and 56A1. With 56A1 at the tail end of the magazine, so you know when you're getting low, and you're also not putting your best ammunition at the bottom of the magazine, obviously. And that is going to bring the total of this Meta M4 to 386,000 rubles. An expensive build, but an absolute beam for 556. If you want this build, you know the drill exclamation point meta m4 type it in twitch or go the weapon builds channel in my discord guys speaking of which if you're not in my discord it's one of the most active escape from tarkov communities out there lots of good dudes in there doesn't matter your skill level there's giga chads there's new players everyone's in there having a good time and that's personally why i just sit and shoot the shit with you guys i love to meet you guys and i would like to see you in there earlier we touched base with the go-to assault rifle in the 308 caliber as well as the go-to long range weapon it was once again in the 308 caliber we have one more 308 weapon in this. It's just because 308 is such a heavy hitting round this wipe, but this is neither going to be our go to short range or our go to long range. This is going to completely blend in between. And I also really recommend this on any dark map or any nighttime maps. And that weapon, I'm sure you guys say, is the 308 MDR. You can tell it's 308 MDR by the way it is. Nah, but if you don't know, you can tell because it's black. Now, you do have to complete Wet Job Part 4 from Peacekeeper to unlock this. And it is locked behind peacekeeper level four but if you have max traders i'm sure many of you guys have completed this task it also spawns like crazy in the mark rooms if you didn't know so what does the 308 mdr have going on for it well it's hard to strip for attachments first and foremost which over the long run you're probably just going to get it back with all your attachments or you're not going to get any gun back whatsoever but they have to commit to really picking up this weapon it's kind of a pain in the ass next it has a really short barrel length. Like, you're not gonna have to worry about it going ahead and indexing indoors whatsoever but the big thing I love about the MDR that no one talks about is how quiet this gun is. For a 308 weapon, this thing sounds like you're shooting 9mm. The audible range is only around like 35 meters to 40 meters, which is just insane. Most of the suppressed weapons clock in over at like 75 meters. Also, it got a stealth buff this wipe with the 25 round magazines from the Sig Spear, just like how we put them in the RSS. Previously, it was bound to 20 round magazines, and this does have a full auto mode which is very usable by the way you can use this at mid-range and put targets down it's also a demon on semi you can use it just like a dmr this is kind of like your jack of all trades 308 dmr for that reason it's also pretty easy to mod so we're gonna need to start with a base 308 mdr peacekeeper level 4 will sell this for 1264 dollars now this build is gonna be super simple you'll probably already figure it out so let's roll through it the se express foregrip for mechanic level 4 for 17,000 rubles it's the go-to metaphor grip I'm sure you're tired of me saying it. The CAC QDC muzzle brake kit from Mechanic Level 3 for 18,000 rubles, and the CAC PSR sound suppressor from Peacekeeper Level 3 for $438 after completing Gunsmith Part 13. Next, we do M Bus Flip of Iron Sights for the extra ergo from Mechanic Level 2 for 4,000 rubles each. We pair this with the 25 round spear magazines, and I like to go ahead and slap a Balder Pro laser light on this from Skier Level 2 for 9,000 rubles. For optics, I like to run this with the HHS 1 Flip Apollo. Like I said, it's the jack of all trades. This is one of the best 1Xs and it has the magnified option as well. And I did a whole video on why I use this curse optic that has all these recoil issues and all these bugs. Everyone dogs on me for this. But at the end of the day, I have way higher KD than them. And I'm constantly walking to extract with their shit in my bag. You can put whatever optic you want on this. But I would strongly suggest a 1x4 optic. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll have that linked in the top right right now. This MDR is going to be priced in at 357,000 rubles. You can go ahead and type meta MDR into my Twitch chat and get this full build or navigate over to the Discord. 
Last, but certainly not least, is the Sig Spear. So the Sig Spear is the big heavy hitter they added to this wipe. You're probably not gonna have it with max traders. You need to do a lot of light keeper tasks, and I'll have a full walkthrough on that. I really saw there was really nothing on YouTube for that, but this is really a huge end game goal. That being said, they do spawn the mark rooms quite a lot. You can farm them there, or you can get them from rogues or the goons. That's where I've gotten a lot of mine. I have an entire wall of them in the stash and an entire weapon crate filled with them. And I luckily have not had to buy a single one. If you do, they go for roughly 400 to 500,000 rubles on the flea market. But I do see them randomly drop down to around 250,000 rubles in the dead of the night for some reason. So if you're around those degen hours, you might be able to snipe some. Now, the Sig Spear is pretty easy to modify. However, it shoots fast and it shoots a very big round. A new round, 6-8 Fury, which is just insane. It's closest to 308 if you have to compare it to something. And the biggest issue this weapon has is side to side recoil. So we'll be addressing that with this build. But we'll make sure it's still snappy. So the Sig Spear, we're going to go ahead and modify it by adding the SE Express foregrip from Mechanical of 4 for 16,000 rubles. Then we'll put the Growl S pistol grip from Peacekeeper of 4 for $177 for the best ergo. We'll go for the MPX retractable stock adapter from Peacekeeper level 3 for $28. That way we're not using the proprietary folding stocks from Sig. And then we're going to strap on an empty crosshair buffer tube. So this is a buffer tube that can't go on many weapons. It's a hydraulic buffer tube and it's sold from Peacekeeper level 4 for $182 after completing Terror Group Employee. And what this does is it gives us more recoil for less ergo. Now this weapon doesn't need any more ergo and it's really going to help impact that horizontal, that side to side recoil that you can't control and just make your shots significantly tighter make your groupings at range much, much tighter, which you're going to love. If you haven't tried it with this buffer tube, I'd strongly recommend it. On top of that buffer tube, we go for the PRS Gen 3 stock from Peacekeeper Level 3 for $184, and you're going to need to complete Gunsmith 14. For a tactical device, once again, we go for the Balder Pro from Skier 2 for 9,000 rubles. And then I like to run this with a flip-up optic. You may not enjoy that once again. This feels more like a close-range rifle to me. I do some, see some people running it with like 1x6 scopes, and you can tap it like a DMR, but I just don't really think it's a strong suit and it fits much better in that 1x range. You could just treat this like the big brother to the SA-58. The one drawback is it only has 25 round magazines. All those were huge for 308s because they're a buff when previously they could only use 20 round magazines. This is a very small magazine for the rate of fire of this weapon. This weapon shoots at 800 rounds per minute. That is the same as an M4, so just keep that in mind. You need to have some trigger discipline with this weapon, but if you do, you will be putting people down. The total cost of this spear is going to come in at 560,000 rubles. One of the most expensive guns you're going to be running this wipe, but very fun. Still cheaper than the real life variant. And if you want this full weapon build, you can go ahead and type exclamation point meta spear in my Twitch chat or navigate over to the Discord. And there you have the six most meta weapons in Escape from Tarkov right now. You guys may be disappointed to not see things like the Ash 12 on here, or maybe some other things that are sweet to your heart. I'll be doing a complete off meta list, which is really just focused on good weapons that have obvious drawbacks, but you can work around them and they're a lot of fun to use. Things like the Ash 12, things like a jailbroken M4, and other crazy curse weapons that are actually extremely effective. If you guys are looking forward to that, let me know in the comments down below. And if you made it this far in the video, I just want to say I really appreciate you guys. If you haven't seen the ultimate settings to be running in Escape from Tarkov, go ahead and watch that right now. Some of these things I'm talking about are extremely hush-hush that FPS professionals use to get an advantage on average players like you.